Supposed Bible Contradiction How did Judas die? Matthew 27 says Judas died by hanging. However, in Acts, Luke records he fell headlong and burst asunder, causing his bowels to gush out. So how can this be addressed? Well, I think skeptics are jumping the gun on this one. This one can easily be addressed by noting that Matthew is telling us how Judas died, and Luke is telling us the effects of Judas' body after his death. Matthew tells us Judas went out and hanged himself, but this happened on Friday when Jesus died, just before the Sabbath, when no one would have bothered to cut him down. The Jews also had taboos about touching dead bodies, so it is likely no one would have wanted to go near a hanging body, especially the body of a traitor. When rotting bodies are left alone, the internal bacteria begins to break down tissues, which in turn causes gases to swell up in the body. Pressure builds up and can cause the body to burst open, which is likely what happened to Judas' body. If his body was left alone for days to decompose, when someone finally cut the rope or the branch snapped, the force of hitting the ground could have caused the body to burst open. As one medical textbook puts it, between three and seven days, ever-increasing pressure of the putrefying gases associated with colliquative changes in the soft tissues may lead to softening of the abdominal parietes, resulting in bursting open of the abdomen and thorax. John Polhill also notes there is some early evidence the original reading may have been become swollen instead of falling headlong. The phrases are similar in Greek and it could have been a scribal error. So the accounts can be demonstrated to cohere nicely and it matches modern medical descriptions of a decomposing body. Matthew can be seen as recording how Judas died and Luke records what happened to the body after his death. Another theory that has been proposed is that Matthew is not being literal, but is describing Judas' death in terms of the traitor Ahithophel from 2 Samuel 17. Audrey Conrad notes that Matthew's use of the words for departed and hanged himself occur in 2 Samuel 17.23. Plus, John's Gospel also compares Judas to Ahithophel. So Matthew is essentially telling us that Judas went out and became another Ahithophel, and hanging himself would just be terminology to denote he died the death worthy of a traitor. It would be sort of like today if I said someone bit the dust. It is a cultural expression to denote someone died, not that someone literally bit dust. Matthew might be doing a similar thing with the phrase, went out and hanged himself. It's possible the culture of that day would have understood this as a way to say he died the death of a traitor, like Ahithophel. Craig Keener says, The hanging may well recall the story of Ahithophel's end after his betrayal of David, which fits some other David-Jesus parallels in the pre matthian passion tradition. Judas presumably died without atonement, and the narrative underlines that he received his just due. Either of these solutions are fine, but even if Matthew is being literal and alluding to Ahithophel at the same time, the accounts still cohere nicely. The next issue is Matthew says the priest purchased a field, but Luke says Judas acquired it. So some skeptics suggest there is a contradiction in who purchased the field. But this isn't actually true. Matthew and Luke use two different Greek words here. Matthew uses a word that refers to making a business transaction, whereas Luke uses a word to refer to acquiring something, which can refer to purchasing, but doesn't have to. So in other words, Matthew notes the priest bought the field, but Luke tells us that it belonged to Judas. So the priest would have bought it in Judas' name. This can be seen in Matthew, where the priest refused to put the money back into the treasury because it came from betraying innocent blood. Ancient societies, especially Jewish societies, had ritual purity laws against accepting money that was used for immoral purposes. So it makes sense that when the priest purchased the field, they would do it in Judas' name, hence Judas acquired the field of blood. This avoids a paper transaction showing the priest bought something with blood money avoiding a ritual purity issue for the public to see. Luke, of course, would report what a later writer would have seen from the records, whereas Matthew writes as one who was an eyewitness, having first-hand knowledge of how the purchasing of the field went down. 
so in reality, the accounts cohere nicely. Thus, this supposed contradiction can be resolved. <laughs>